gonna try to get this thing running right with a sweeping solution. As we mentioned, the carburetor isn't running right. It's loading up, it stinks, it's got no power, it falls on its face when you put it down. We think that there's vacuum leaks in it, or hell, maybe it's just messed up, I don't know. The solution we were given by a friend that we couldn't turn down, a good friend of dad's, was, hey, I'll give you a Holly, uh, because it's never gonna run right with that Edelbrock anyway. I've got some laying around, so uh, he rebuilt it and everything and just gave it to us, so that's fucking cool. So the solution that we're gonna have to the carburetor issue is to uh, yank this one off and put this one in. So quite a bit different. It's a four barrel Holly 700. It's a little bit higher volume. Apparently a much better carburetor for our purposes. So hopefully when we get this in, uh, it just fires up and our problems are solved and I can uh, start driving it. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the name of the game today is getting that out of there and getting that in there. I anticipate running into issues because if you'll notice by looking at them both, the orientation is a little different. <laughs> so the Saddlebrock goes across ways whereas the, the Holly is like this. So I'm guessing that all the perfectly measured fuel lines and vacuum hoses and everything will need to be changed in order to fit that in the place that we've made for this. So what can go wrong will go wrong I'm sure. So that's what's about to happen. Now, before you go commenting away about the fact that everything on my engine says Edelbrock and I'm about to put a Holly carburetor on it, yes, you have a point, it is kind of silly, but I can justify it because uh, my intake is Edelbrock, my timing set is Edelbrock, and uh, there's Edelbrock stuff on here, so I mean, whatever. I'll just get a Holly sticker and put it on the back window next to the Edelbrock one. So yeah. <laughs> We gotta get the linkage hooked up to do this Hold right. On, uh, shut the key off. Smoke ain't normal, huh? No, it's still got the float too high.
suddenly a couple days later. There's a reason for that. Uh, we caught everything on fire. The holly carb was just flooding like crazy in the, the back two barrels, and it had flamed up a couple times, which, you know, happens when you're working out carburetor issues. But uh, it just didn't stop, and uh, we had to throw a pound of flour on it just to stop it from burning the garage down. Important lesson, if you're going to smother fire with a rag, make sure it's not a rag that you just use to wipe up gasoline. Uh, just putting it out there. So, the Holly obviously had issues and came back off. Dad spent a day rebuilding the Edelbrock with a kit that we got from O'Reilly's, found that the floats were just... <coughs> thrown in there, not set at all, just hanging out, so uh, gonna work on that and try to see if we can't get the Edelbrock drivable. Um, probably won't be able to tune it up right, uh, <clears throat> but can at least get it to where I can start driving it instead of it just sitting here in the garage. So uh, Edelbrock is in, the floats have been set to the proper height. Also I changed the oil because after 50 miles metal shavings and such from the new engine are pretty thick so you want to drop it after 50 miles and change the oil. Uh, the oil was fairly gray so I mean it's, it's, I can see how it's necessary. So let's go ahead and uh, see if this is any better.
researching the fuel issues now. 